Okay, well, welcome everybody. My name is Randy Strombeck with Quinnadia, and again, Steve Burris and Mr. Mark Derniak. And we just uh, today our our session is going to be on really what Koinonia is, not the ministry of Koinonia that we're all a part of, but the anointing of Koinonia <clears throat> and what Koinonia really is in in the Bible and in the earth today. And we just got done with our Koinonia event actually here in in uh, Who, which is Mark's church here in Pennsylvania, and we just had a blow up <laughs> if i could just say it like that that's why we got you know makeup and snot and tears and everything everywhere and uh so today it's going to be a little difficult for us but we wanted to share because this anointing is just so stunning and to me koinonia again even though it is the name of our ministry and that my parents started so many years ago and of course our family and all of our friends are still a part of it but koinonia, and we'll start laying out the verses, but koinonia is literally fellowship. Fellowship with the Lord, with the Father himself, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and with one another. And um, some of the things that I think we'll begin to lay out is what it means and how we get there. Maybe if we can just spend a few minutes on how, maybe even some practical things yeah. on how we get there. And so some of the root meanings of the word in the Bible, and, and it's, it's stated either fellowship, which is koinonia, or partner, or there's different things, unity a couple different times, I think. Um, but for me, it has um, moved more to a lifestyle rather than just an event. Uh, one of the definitions I read the other day was um, fellowship made possible through Christ and His Spirit. And I even say it like this, um, koinonia is kind of like pouring water into water. It's not that we're unrecognizable, but that the love puts us together so tight. Uh, one of my spiritual fathers even explains it like this, once you're together, if you tear it apart, both, both halves die or both parts die because that's literally the way the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are. They're yep. totally inseparable. And they actually, that's how this koinonia uh, works, is just like the relationship in those uh, three. Okay, so how about we just kind of dig into the scripture here and kind of flesh this stuff out. So in Philippians 2.1, I'll just read this. It says, therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship, and again, this word is koinonia, if there is any koinonia of the Spirit, if there is affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in Spirit, and intent on one purpose. And the one purpose is the Lord. It's not a ministry, even though our name is Koinonia, it's not a ministry. It is the Lord. It's literally what we've been talking about this identity is the the Koinonia of the Spirit is literally the, the kind of the pathway of the formation of the body. That's how it's actually being formed through Koinonia, because if you don't have this anointing, it's very hard to be in unity. And we've all seen, you know, for a long time, people try and come into unity without having true Koinonia. All right. So the result of Koinonia is unity right you yeah. can't force unity and then hope you know then the lord comes no it, it's backwards I mean, we talked about this a couple sessions ago that love has to be the foundation that's right? right that's yeah. right god is love he's the foundation and so from that unity is a fruit of love that's right you know and so you know even we were talking about the galatians uh five fruits of the spirit you know the fruit of the spirit is love and we didn't get to talk about this too much but you talked about it kind of like being that first rung on the ladder mm -hmm. The way I was reading it in the Greek one time, it actually looked like in the Greek that love was the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then literally like a piece of fruit, as you opened up love, there was joy, there was peace, there was you yeah, know, patience. patience and kindness mm -hmm. and self-control and all of those things were inside. like Almost like love <clears throat> broke itself open and then you find love is peace and joy and kindness and all That's those right. kinds of things. So, mm -hmm. so it actually comes out. Yeah. Wow, that is the fruit of love. Mm -hmm. So it has the nature. Each one of those things have, have the nature of the love. The DNA in it. of love. That's in it. right. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yep. Yeah. 
So when I see this verse here and I see the maintaining the same love, for me, that's one of the main portions of this, mm -hmm. that fellowship, koinonia, is us maintaining the same love, which is the love of the Father. It's His love that He loved us with. It's the commandment that Jesus gave the new one. Mm -hmm. You know, love one another mm -hmm. as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. That's the same love. It's His love in us. Just like the faith we have is <clears throat> Jesus' faith. He has given that to us. The love He has given to us is that love that we share among one another. And that's really why we've heard so many times, I can, and it's not even people that are like literally understanding what koinonia is. They'll just go someplace else in the world and they'll feel like, oh my gosh, I just feel like I've known you forever, like the spirit, yeah. because it's this same love united in spirit, intent on one purpose. That's right. It's the love of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next verse we want to hit is uh, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. I'll read it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, which is the Father, and the fellowship, which is koinonia, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And I pulled this verse up. It is so strong. You can feel it just sitting here, can't oh you? Gosh, right now. Yeah, it's, just, it's crazy, this, this anointing that's in this room right now, because it starts out with grace. It touches the Lord himself. It touches the foundation of all the things we've been talking about, which is the love of the Father. And the fellowship or the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. And be with you all. It's just stunning. And we're just sitting here feeling this anointing. I was like, I'm going to go back to crying. We cried for two and a half hours this morning in the, in the gathering. I'm like, we can't get out of it. And so I hope whenever you watch this video, I hope it actually feeling. bleeds through the video. You know, yeah. But it really does touch all. There's nobody that's excluded from this. What we're talking about right here. Yeah. The Lord Himself, because grace literally is the person of the Lord being released. It's not just like one of these, you know, kind of ethereal things. It literally is grace be unto you. He's talking about the Lord Himself. Yeah. yeah. This is the second time now where we see the fellowship, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. That's right. We've talked about this before. I think it bears repeating that the Holy Spirit is actually the Spirit of the Father. Uh -huh. And Jesus was very clear, John 14, 15, and 16, even later on in John 21 when he breathes this Holy Spirit on his, on his brethren. And then in Acts where he says, don't leave without this Spirit. I recognize that this koinonia of the Holy Spirit, it's both a, I, I share this one love, this un, uh, one purpose. I forget now all of a sudden what it says. But I first share it with him. Right. Mm -hmm. This koinonia that I want to experience with you guys, I first share it with him. It's fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and then it's fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That's it's right. koinonia among us. It's yeah. the literal spirit yeah. of the Father <laughs> shared among us. You don't have it all. I don't have it all. But we're in it all together. Mm -hmm. right. And I feel like that's, that's a bit of a paradigm shift that I personally had to make many years ago. Because I still, I kind of had this idea that the Holy Spirit was in me, and then the Holy Spirit was in Randy, and then the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit was in Steve. But I started to really see, especially when we walked in this spirit of koinonia, that it was actually the other way around. Yes, was he in us, but it was because we were in him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now it's not me in him separately from you. It's all of us together in him. Yeah. Similar to how joy, peace, patience, and kindness are all inside love, so are Steve, Randy, and Mark all inside the koinonia of the Spirit of the Father. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why it's a fully shared experience. I, don't, I almost like see that as a picture, and that, that really helps me personally, yeah. to kind of see us inside of Him, and because we're inside of Him, and then He permeates all that we are, and then that's the inward working of His Spirit. Mm -hmm. In yeah, us. even in like in the the translation I have here, um, rather than fellowship or whatever they would normally translate this, they actually use the word. They felt strongly enough about it to use the word communion. Yeah. Hmm. So the communion. Wow. Right. That was taking place. So our partaking <clears throat> of the nature of the Father, our partaking of the Holy Spirit, as he writes it here, and our partaking of. Mark yep. and Randy and the spirit that's in you that's and right. in me, that shared communion of the Father and with the Father through each other was so okay. important. I, I just like the way they translated that here. Yeah. That is communion. That word is translated also communion. You can see koinonia in there. Yeah. And it's also, like you say, it's the partaking of one another. 
Yeah. Why did the Lord say to his guys, you know, eat my flesh, drink my so blood? Important. Yeah, he wasn't talking about the physical stuff, but they had to partake of everything that he had gone through and will go through yeah. so that they could truly want to know, know one another. Right. And then he said, do what? Do this in remembrance of me. He's not talking about just the sacraments yeah. or whatever. So he's right. literally himself. talking about not just eating of himself, but li literally eating of himself mm -hmm. in, in, in and through one another. I mean, that literally is the partaking of koinonia together, the partaking of communion, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you're part of the body. I'm part of the body. You right. guys are part of the body. And he's like, do this in remembrance of me. Don't deny the body. Like you've even talked about this many times where you're like, you know, don't deny the body. Yeah. Yeah, even like in... In, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 11 where he talks about how you know many among you are sick and many sleep mm -hmm. because you that's did right. not discern my body that's right and that's not his physical body that's your brother that's the person standing next to you, you didn't discern me in them that's right and so you didn't partake of what you needed right it, it caused you to come out of that with less than what I had for you because mm -hmm. you couldn't receive it from that person right and yeah that's what I meant discern not deny yeah, yeah. discern it mm -hmm. You know what I love about this verse? I just need to stay here for a second because I'm just, I'm all in it again. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get out of it. Communion of the Holy Spirit, which means that He trusts us so much yeah. that He shares all of Himself with us. When I think of the word communion, one of the most important words I think about is shared. You know, and actually... Again, I don't know how this sounds to you guys, but it's partnership, it's particip participation. And it actually talks about like a level of intercourse. Okay. Now I know that they talk about that more in like a social perspective where we're having a dialogue, which can also be called an intercourse. But it is a level, this word has a level of unity to it, a level of intimacy with it that is very, very special and very shared. Mm -hmm. That, you know, this is the Father Himself giving the most real part of himself, his spirit. If you were to take your spirit out of you, Steve, you'd be dead. It'd be gone. You would be physically dead. In the same way, the Father shares freely with him, us, yes. the very vitality of who he is. That's right. Freely. Like when I think of Koinonia, I think of how I can so freely share of you. You let me all the way into you. I can have any part of you I want. That's right. Yeah. And the Father did that with us first. He gave us himself fully. Mm. I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the love that the Father has for us, the trust he has for us, because I didn't earn this. I didn't prove that I deserved any of this from the standpoint of my actions or behavior, but he knew who I was. And if I was ever going to display the fullness of how he made me to be, he first had to give me the fullness of himself. That's right. That's koinonia for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, We say I mean. it all the time. If you give yourself fully, they will... Eventually, they'll get around to giving you themselves fully. Exactly. So he demonstrated that from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give myself to you fully so that you can do the same mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So at the end of Peter's first sermon in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, we see another uh, mention of this word koinonia, and it actually is interpreted, at least in the NAS, as fellowship. I'm not sure what you have there, Steve. Um, fellowship. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it says here in verse 41, So then those who, were uh, who, those who had received Peter's word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. So this incredible outpouring of the Spirit brings in all of these hungry people at one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these are guys that were hanging out together, devoting themselves. Actually, in Acts 1, it says the same thing about devoting themselves to one another. Mm -hmm. In Acts 1, and they were devoting themselves to prayer. <laughs> they come out filled with the Spirit and overcome by these tongues. And in one afternoon or morning, I guess it was, 3,000 people are added to their number. We've heard anywhere from, I don't know what you guys have heard about as far as the numbers of people in that room that day, but somewhere between 50 and 100, that's the number I had heard. Maybe there's yeah. more. But um, to go from 50 and 100 for quite a while to 3,000 people, yeah. You better have something more than just a, hey, we got a little plan here. And yeah. I think this fellowship, this koinonia of the Spirit that we're talking about is actually what kept them. It wasn't a strategic plan. It mm -hmm. wasn't a, we need to have a vision meeting as a leadership team. Yeah. This was, Lord, you're doing something among us. 
You're the one that came upon us and filled us with your spirit and came upon us in power. And now we need you to keep us together. Mm -hmm. And so the next verse makes a lot of sense when you think of it in those terms. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching because they were completely... They, they had a very Jewish mindset. So their understanding of the Lord was based upon, you know, what the Pentateuch said, what the prophets said through an Old Testament mindset. Mm -hmm. So they didn't think a whole lot different than the Pharisees thought. So they needed to devote themselves to this new way of thinking, yeah. which what the, if you ask me, is what the apostles' teaching was. It was the ability to see the scriptures that they had known and loved for so long, lived by, mm -hmm. through the person of Jesus. That's right. And it took time because that's a mindset shift. Any of us that have come out of any culture into this culture of the Father through Jesus needs a mindset shift. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and then to fellowship. And that's the word koinonia, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So this, they devoted themselves mm -hmm. to this. That word is like, I give myself fully to mm -hmm. this. You know, if you actually look at some of the history, history of this, you'll find out that they literally left everything. They left it all. And they brought whatever they did have, and they began to share it among one another, which we find out here in the rest of the verses of Acts 2. So this koinonia didn't just affect, hey, I got spiritual koinonia with you. I mean, they literally... Right. They, they lived it. They lived this. Yeah. Now, and we're not saying everybody leave your jobs and join a commune or anything like that, no. but the point is this. We, they began to do life together. Yeah. And for me, I feel like that's something that the church is learning to grow in and is very hungry for, is that we have for a long time kind of had like the weekend event mentality when it comes to church. And while we're together, there's a lot of love, there's a lot of spirit, and I feel like the Lord loves us so much that he'll bless whatever we give him to bless. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if yeah. we give him two hours on a Sunday morning, he'll be involved sure. in that because he loves us that yeah. much. But how much more, if we really began to live in this koinonia among one another, if we devoted ourselves to it, what would happen among us? What would the world see? What would wow. the world experience if this unity, this one purpose, was really shared among us? Mm -hmm. I think these guys experienced it. Yeah, that's what I after. think it even, like over at the end of Acts 4, um, like you said, this, we're not talking about commune living here. <clears throat> but I love this part. At the end of uh, chapter 4, in 37, ha those having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And then it goes into the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And I think, um, I, don't, I don't think we can separate that from what you just talked about in chapter 2. It's a continuation. Mm -hmm. There's some things happened in between, but they were continuing to walk in this koinonia together. Mm -hmm. And so they're seeing... Well, I think the next verse after the one that you, you were reading, Mark, um, what is it? Where is Verse 43. 43, yeah. Then fear came on every soul, and many yeah. signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Right. And all who believed were together and had all things in common there and sold is. their possessions and goods and divided them among anyone who had need. And they continued with one accord, breaking bread and all those things. And then you pick that back up in 5, or at the end of chapter 4, where he's still talking about the people were all in. Mm -hmm. They were all in, not for themselves, but for, hey, do you have a need? You know, is, is there a need? Is there something I need to do? I am totally into to this thing to the point that my possessions, as he says, they don't even count their own possessions of their own, right. the things they had. So much so mm -hmm. that um, we see later that Peter is walking down the street yeah. and his very shadow or his countenance really passes over uh, someone sick and they can't stay sick. Right. They just get up. <laughs> he just walks by him. Yeah, he didn't do anything. He did no ministry. He just simply walked. There was such an anointing and I, I'm not sure, I don't think I can explain this properly, but there's such an anointing over this unity, this all in unity that the Lord so inhabits that that Peter literally walked down the street and these people were just getting up. And, and, and they would bring people and lay them just in case Peter comes by today. Yeah. And it wasn't Peter. Mm -hmm. It was Peter's all in and so were all of his brothers. And they were so all in that the Lord was totally inhabiting 
they were so in communion, so in fellowship with the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit that... And with one another. And with one another. Yeah. That this thing just happened. It was heaven came to earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we, we like to talk about all the time. In such a way that when there was a violation of this, it was so precious and it was so yeah. powerful. There's people literally deceased mm -hmm. over the deceit of violating this thing. Yeah, right. And that's not to bring fear or anything, but I'm mm -hmm. just, I want to bring out, man, there is a, there is a powerful anointing to this being all in with the Lord and each other. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. And I think we probably haven't seen just little bits here, little bits there throughout history of this happening, but there's a huge documented evidence that, man, this is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, it is the the heart of God, you know, and this is where we're going with this thing. Well, even when you're talking about that, you can just feel what was happening at the time. It was, like you say, it was so precious that fear really came yeah. fear of the Lord and that well I think it was a healthy fear it wasn't like oh my god we'll lose this or anything but it was so precious that they did not want to do anything and when Ananias and Sapphira did not honor that they, they literally like you say they literally died because it was so holy it was so pure because they were selling things and giving it to the disciples the disciples said hey you need to sell your house and give me your money no that had nothing to do with nope. it because no, they never once said that that's nothing to do with koinonia no. So when it comes and you feel like, oh my gosh, just, I am all in. Inside. That's exactly right. Yeah, and yeah. whatever, you see, for <clears throat> us, like you say, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How, it's it, The word life is in there. Mm -hmm. Everything in my life mm -hmm. is now it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, okay, well, you can have my tithe. Mm -hmm. And you can have my emotions, or some of them. You can have a little bit of my some prayer, <laughs> some of my time. You can have a couple hours here, an hour there. No, if you say lifestyle of koinonia, it literally is my life. Mm -hmm. Everything I have is yours, Lord, so whatever you want, you can have it any time. Yeah. He doesn't always require us to do everything, but he wants the right to your heart mm -hmm. and everything that's inside of you. At any time, we can be obedient. Lord says, give your car away. Mm -hmm. Sure. It was what you gave me anyway. <laughs> and my lifestyle says you can have whatever you mm -hmm. want because I'm all yours. Yeah. It's not that I just have to be foolish about anything. No. We're, if, if we truly have koinonia with the Spirit, we're led by the Spirit. Absolutely. And like the first couple sessions, those that are led by the Spirit sons of God. are the sons, sons of God. Yeah. So you have to have this foundation of love, being led by the Spirit, fellowship of the Spirit, and with one another. And then literally the Lord just blows stuff up. And you, you almost have no control over it, even though... You do. Yeah. You don't take control over it. But it's all done through the Spirit. Yeah. It's amazing what's happening. Really we, we use this, I guess, in the church, we use this this term apostolic Christianity. To me, honestly, this, this full-blown, all-out, you know, us walking in the fullness of the Lord. And it is, I guess maybe it's a, it's a popular phrase now, to, you know, the apostolic Christianity. But that is... This is apostolic Christianity, is apostolic. that you're walking in the fullness of the Lord and in the fullness of each other. Right. Because this is what happens. This, when he comes, mm -hmm. and that's what he comes to, is the fact that I honor and value him in you so much that, that I can hand you my checkbook and just say, do whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. you know, because I honor so much what's in you and value what's in you. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it. Even as you said that, something just, you know, hit me. A thought went through my head, like a picture of Peter when you were talking about that, that day when he was walking down the road. We normally think of apostles or people in, like, super high forms of leadership in the church, people bowing down to them. Literally, the sickness had to bow down, not the man. Right. Because of the fellowship of the Spirit and one another that it literally could not stand. Yeah. And the man stood up, right? Yeah. And the sickness literally had to leave. That's good. You know, so it's the opposite of how we kind of relate to mm -hmm. how we would think like, oh, there's an apostle in the room. Oh, don't yes, say anything, don't exactly, do anything, exactly you know, don't opposite. mess the opposite. You know, it's exactly the opposite. Whereas this apostle, if a true apostle walks in the room, his heart is so wide open, he's go, oh, mm -hmm. I've got to be with that man. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. You never even met the guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And your heart is just like, mm -hmm. Vroom, that's the exact opposite yeah. of the normal reaction we would have with something mm -hmm. like that. I was thinking about this fellowship of the Spirit, okay? So we have the fullness of the Father's Spirit whenever we want it. Oh, yeah. That's the koinonia of the Spirit. And then the koinonia of the Spirit is also, if I truly have koinonia with you and koinonia with you, 
that if I am someplace when you are not, and we truly walk in the fellowship of the Spirit, then your grace is also on my life. That's right. Your yeah. grace is also on my life. That's absolutely true. So when I walk, not only do I have my own grace, you know, because we've operated all in our own graces before. We know yeah, what that yeah. feels like. Yeah. We're used to that. And it works, okay? We've all walked in my right. personal grace or this gift of the Spirit God gave me. Right. But when we realize that we have full koinonia with the Father's Spirit and with one another, what are we missing? What do we lack? We exactly. lack nothing. Mm -hmm. And so when we truly devote ourselves to one another in this way, and then someone comes among us, they lack nothing. Everything's available. Even if Steve and Randy aren't with me, I have the fullness of your grace, your personal anointing that the Lord gives you in me. Mm -hmm. And though you're not there, literally people can experience the grace of God in your life in me mm -hmm. and vice versa. That's right. Yeah. Well, that Paul even talks about, he says, though I'm not with you in the mm -hmm. flesh, I'm with you in the spirit. That's right. Because he'd come into that and it was in a yeah, little bit of a disciplinary, but disciplinary you know, area. But he's like, we are so close. I know exactly what's going on with you. Right. And it wasn't like the Lord showed me. No, his spirit was literally there because exactly. he says, I'm with you I'm in with the you spirit. In spirit. Exactly right. So that's exactly what Paul's talking about. Yep. And he loved those guys. He wasn't like, you're messing up so bad, you know, and all this other stuff. He yeah. loved them. So That's he what actually, gave him access. Right. And the That's same would be access. true. If I'm messing up in my life, I want you. Mm -hmm. I want you. I want all the other people that I'm in real point of need yeah. with to know what's going on in my life. Go, hey, Randy, listen, you know what? Exactly. Stop it. Yeah. Whatever. We'll feel it. Exactly. Yeah. If we have right. real love for one another, you won't have to call us and say, hey, I need some prayer. Right. No, no, no. We feel it. I got you, man. Oh, I've yeah. already been with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. it's love is the access. That is so important. It's not a prophetic insight, though no. it gives us, love gives us prophetic insight. Oh, yeah. Love is the door. Right. If we remember love is the door, then yeah. all of the Spirit's available to us. That's right. This next verse I want to read is uh, 1 John chapter 1. Uh, what was from verse 1? What was from the beginning what we have heard? what we have seen with our own eyes. These are personal things um, that they've seen. What we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of the Lord, literally the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Not just the word of the Lord, but the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship, koinonia, with us. And indeed, our koinonia yep. fellowship is with the Father yep. and with His Son, wow. Jesus Christ. So it's like all of these things we've seen, we've heard, we've touched, we've smelled, we've tasted, everything that we have experienced, all of it, we're now not just sharing with you, but we're inviting you into this relationship, this super deep, all-in relationship of Koinonia with us. Wow. That's what the love of the Father does. Because he says it twice in that, in that same verse 3. So that you too may have the fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship, not my fellowship, he, he just, as soon as he put them in there with us, all in. right? I mean, it was instant. As soon as I put you in here, you're now nice. you have the same fellowship that I do already, and I've just introduced you to this, uh, with the Father and the Son, Christ Jesus. And that's amazing. And normally we'll try and, and go through all these steps and all these different things, but he goes, no, wait a minute, I want you to come in here. And then the very next sentence is, oh, yeah. no, wait a minute, you've already got complete access through the Holy <laughs> Spirit to the Father and the Son. I'm like, golly, it's so immediate. What are we missing? Yeah, what are we missing? <laughs> what are we missing? They, like you said, they know it. Yeah. They actually know it. So, mm -hmm. you know, back to the example of the apostle walking in the room. That's what he does because, not just his maturity, but because his coin and he's already walking in, he literally pulls us in with him. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he's talking about doing right here. Mm -hmm. So I've now just opened myself up. I walked in the room. I don't have to say a word. And I've pulled you into literally fellowship with the Father and fellowship with with the Son, Jesus Christ, By through the Holy Spirit. simply being involved in your spirit, That's in right. your heart. That's right. Loving you gets me access to all that's on the inside of you. That's right. 
So these things we write so that your joy may be made complete. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship, koinonia, with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. I think that's part, partly what Ananias and Sapphira did. I think that's what yeah. They were trying to fit in and say, yeah, yeah, we're part of koinonia. You know, then, then there was literally no fear of the Lord, no response because it wasn't true. Yeah. And it was so obvious that, you know, they're, they're just gone. They did not discern his body. They did not discern well, his body. That's exactly right. So that's where the, you know, that's where it got, they hit him. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship, koinonia, with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Gosh, I get so excited about it every time I talk about this because literally the process of walking with your brothers through the Holy Spirit, with the Father, with the Son, it literally cleanses us. We have this such a false understanding, That's I think, good. like we have got to clean ourselves up in order to be in right relationship with uh, mm -hmm. you know, whomever, whether it's in leadership or whether it's yeah. one another. When the Father himself, is like in, we talked about the prodigal, no, just come here. I mean, he didn't clean him up before yeah. he put his robe on, before yeah. he put it, he didn't say that. So he's like, bring it all and wrap him up in it and all the crap he's been living in and all the junk. This is what Koinonia does yeah. right here. Come in here and through the process of all that stuff, you'll get cleaned up. Yep. It'll be just fine. I'll right. take care of it. I'm trustful yeah. enough in the Lord. He'll take care of you. Right. You know, just come in here and be with me. Just on this thing about one another. Um, I jotted down a bunch of the, the different things where it talks about one another, but I think we all kind of know what those are. But I, I did hear this once. Um, I tried to look it up myself, and I don't remember exactly the numbers. But the Lord uses that term or that phrase, one another, in the New Testament more times than he mentions either heaven or mentions hell. Hmm. He mentions one another. So what's the closest to his heart? Heaven, hell, or one another? Mm -hmm. Over and over and over, that phrase appears, one another, love one another, you know, be devoted to one another, walk with one another, serve one another, accept one another, all those different things. Mm -hmm. It is his heart. It is. That is, that quinonia of one another is so very important that he actually talks about it more than he talks about heaven or hell, which we emphasize more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I think it's just interesting. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so the last uh, series of verses we want to go through, I believe something may come, else come, may, may come out, but is in Philemon. And it's a short little book, but let, we'll, we'll spend a few minutes on it. So let's start in verse 4. It says, I thank my God always making mention of you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all of the saints. You gotta see that. Love <laughs> and yeah. faith both toward Jesus right. as the Son and love and faith toward each other. Right. <laughs> we can't just have love and faith in God and expect everything to be all right. No, this is love. My love and faith for God is actually mirrored in my love and faith for you guys. That's true. Very true. Powerful. And I pray that the fellowship or koinonia of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you, mm -hmm. in you for Christ's sake. Bless He's you. just literally pounding, this is already in you. Christ, yeah. the hope of glory, all these things. And it comes out literally through koinonia mm -hmm. and it becomes powerful and effective and it just starts to explode things around yeah. you. You know, I, I've seen this verse play out practically so many times yeah. that when we literally have this love and faith toward one another this koinonia of our faith toward one another what it it gives me is 2020 vision to your value yeah i can't help but see this well of goodness this well of the literal what does it say every good thing Mm -hmm. I see it. I can't help but see in it. That's right. This love, this koinonia, this devotion to one another actually causes me to see through all of your junk. Do I see all the stuff? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I see it, but it's as if it has no impact on my opinion or value of you That's anymore. Right. Because this, this literally becoming effective 
causes me to see the way Jesus sees. It's That's very right. similar to what we were reading about earlier, that this, this knowledge of every good thing which is in us for Christ's sake, I'm able to see it. I'm not going to focus anymore on your sin. I'm not going to focus on all the behavior problems you have or all the attitudes you have. Koinonia helps us to kind of cut through all of that right. to focus on the real well of goodness on the inside of you. You want to overcome a man's sin? Don't manage his sin from the outside. Reveal the good well on the inside of them, and that overcomes all that they're trapped in. Right. right. Yeah, he says, I see all the good things in you, mm -hmm. not on you. on you. Yep. It's the same thing we've been talking about earlier, is you go past all that stuff and see what's in and who the really the man really is inside. Yeah. Instead of this shroud that, right. that he's, you know, uh, you know, succumbed to. Yeah, really. That next verse, verse 7, were you going to read that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's just something uh, going back to this thing about the one another and this this importance of you, I have your grace because we're all in together. Mm -hmm. I love what it says here. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. That's right. <laughs> Not by the That's Lord. Right. Uh huh. That's right. Their hearts were refreshed by you and what you carried in that well that was inside, inside you. You. You refreshed the saints. They drew from your well mm -hmm. when they were thirsty and you were willing mm -hmm. and they saw it in you and they took of it yep so let's read also in, in verse 10 and we read a little bit of this the other day when we were talking about uh, fathering it says I appeal to you to my son to my child Onesimus whom I have begotten in my imprisonment who formerly was useless to you but now is useful both to you and to me and I have sent him back to you in, pr in person that is sending you my very heart. And I think it goes even beyond fathering that he literally was learning koinonia because koinonia is from the inside. Yeah. It's not an action that we do that brings koinonia. It's a heart thing that we open up that brings koinonia right. because it has to start from the inside out. And it's not you and I can go on trips all over the world and not really know each other. Unless yeah. we go through the somewhat painful times and things of learning what real relationship and what real fellowship is. Mm. You then, literally become a band of brothers. That's exactly right. <laughs> because of the things you go through. That's not right. because you did the ministry together, right. but because you went through the stuff together. That's exactly right. You know, I kind of go back to verse yeah. 6 first. I kind of yeah, I just yeah. want to tear this up because yeah. the fellowship of your faith... <laughs> My faith's not effective until I see that every good thing in you. That's right. You see that? Mm -hmm. I can say I have all this faith. I can move mountains. Remember how he says in 1 sure. Corinthians 13? Yeah. But if I don't have love, it no, literally means it's nothing. nothing. Right. And he's just, he's confirming it here. He says, look, until you truly see one another in this love, in this koinonia, your faith means nothing. That's how committed he is to the one another you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. More than heaven, more than hell, more than a lot of things I think we put a lot of emphasis on. Yeah. His emphasis is on one another. Mm -hmm. Are they learning to walk in this love? When their faith becomes effective, I'll know it because they'll see every good thing mm -hmm. on the inside of one another. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Dang. How about we jump on down to verse 15. For perhaps he was for this reason separated from you for a while that you would have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and the Lord? What he's talking about is the manifestation of the relationship they have in the natural and in the spiritual Absolutely. realm. Absolutely. And so if it only, we were talking about this earlier, if it only, if this koinonia and these relationships only affect us in the Lord... Mm -hmm they become, in my opinion, ineffective because yep. they're not in the flesh as right. well, like our everyday life. We need life. to see it here. Absolutely. Monday yeah. morning. <laughs> it has to, it has to play out through everything in our life <clears throat> over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an instant thing, but sure. over time it begins to transform not your mind only, mm -hmm. but your body and your work and your career and your ministry and everything else. Yep. So it has to do that. Otherwise, it's just something else. Yeah. I love that phrase, a beloved brother. That's right. Mm -hmm. You prove your belovedness as mm -hmm. a brother in both the flesh and in the Lord. Yeah. I love that. And I, I even like how he said, 
um, that he was away from you for a while, but now I'm sending him back to you forever. So the transformation from being a slave to a son, and then we're going to see how he operated in Koinonia partnership with him, literally lasts forever. It's not just this temporary thing that you can be taken away. You know, a slave can be just thrown out of the house. But it's, remember, if you, read, if you remember in the, in the Word, it says the son remains in the home forever. Yep. That is really what Koinonia does, is it brings permanence. And it, brings, it solidifies literally everything in your life. It doesn't mean that, that things won't change or everything won't change, but you can never be displaced out of that relationship because of the spirit of koinonia mm -hmm. that only can come to the Lord. Right. I'm sending him back to you forever. Yeah. Like, you know. It's funny. I had someone just today ask me this question. She goes, I don't struggle with love and with koinonia anywhere else except here. Like she literally meant in a church setting. And for a while, huh. I was just like, what is going on here? You know, like, I, I actually you know, I felt a little judgment for that. Like, maybe we're not walking in the fullness of the spirit of koinonia like she was experiencing. And so I was just tossing that around in my own spirit for a while. Like, what is the difference? What's the difference between her everyday life and here? And I think it might be, and again, I, there's no judgment here in this because I think we've all experienced this, that we think we're walking in love for somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not necessarily this love of the Father, which is the koinonia of the Holy Spirit, the mm -hmm. love of the Father. And so we think we're walking in love with somebody, you know, and then we have this encounter with the Father's love. Oh, yeah. Okay? And it almost is a little offensive to the love we have been walking in right. thus far because it's not sourced in Him. Is it a, is it a love that comes from us? Sure. Yeah. It's good, but there's a level of the love and koinonia of the Father that's very different than a lot of the people's love that they talk about in the world right. today. Do I believe they're hungering for the real love of the Father? Yeah. Absolutely. Are they practicing to know what it looks like outside of Him? Yes, they are. And the Lord honors it. I believe the Lord honors it fully. But then you come into this real koinonia. And she was like, I know this is right, but why am I struggling so bad right now? And I think it's because we have some mindsets about true love and koinonia that's a little bit different and hey, I love you. Right. Yeah, I'm cool with you. You're cool with me. Right. We'll say we love each other. And then we have koinonia. Then we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. Right. Because I'm suddenly feeling really transparent, really vulnerable, <laughs> almost naked here. Yeah. I was good loving you with my walls up. I was good loving you with my armor on. But this koinonia is demanding me to remove it. Right. I'm not sure I'm ready out. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to be a well I can draw from? Exactly. Yeah. You can't do that with your armor on. Right. Right. I can dip for you, but will you actually let me come in and draw from it? Because that still gratifies me Yeah. that yes. I'm able to serve you. Yes. That's right. filial. That's good. I can give you. Yeah. But you can take what you want. Full access? Different. That's a different story. Oh, yeah. 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 Are, you, are we afraid of what they'll take? Yeah. Probably yeah, serious. Or, no, yeah. seriously. When you're when you're just all open like that, you you have to figure out mm -hmm. is there really something that I won't yeah. allow them to. Touch? I think part of it's that we talked about this morning in the meeting about um, or somebody brought it up anyway about the love your brother as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. We were actually discussing it this weekend um, to that level. I'm afraid of what you might find. Even if I open up because I'm not sure that I'm sufficient for you to take from me. Right. Mm -hmm. You might reach inside me to take something you need and I don't have it because I don't love myself. Mm -hmm. How can I possibly be a well for you when I won't drink my own water? Wow. I don't trust it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something we were kind of seeing this, yep. this past weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. So verse 17, if then you regard me... Again, this is Paul talking to him. A partner, which is the word koinonia, like we said the other day. So if you regard me as koinonia, accept him as you would me. Mm. That's powerful. It, it really is, because what he's saying is, if you're saying to me that we have koinonia with one another, which obviously he already did, and he already had this conversation with him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said, yeah. if. Yeah, right. So, it's like, you know, 
you're my son and you am well pleased, what the enemy say? If yes. you are. So the conversation is already taking place. That's right. So he says to his guys, if you consider me koinonia, like true fellowship, like real fellowship with one another, this guy I'm sending back to you, yeah. that's exactly like me standing right there, mm -hmm. having koinonia with him. And he, we, we use it the other day in the context of fathering. Yeah. But this context, we're using it again. It's the very same verse because it can be in multiple, Absolutely. you know, multiple things. He's like, listen, this man is me standing there. So you can have the same intimacy, the same depth in this man mm -hmm. that you treated as a slave and useless as you do with me. Right. And they, they still, if, if he hadn't had that conversation, I think they would have still always looked at him as a slave. Mm -hmm. Because Paul had to say, listen, this, he is not a slave anymore. No. He's a son. So what he's done is he's pointed out, he's looked past that, he's dipped in himself, and he's seen the well in Onesimus, and he goes, this is who Onesimus is, really. You didn't see it before, but this is who he is, mm -hmm. and he's just like me standing right there right because you, I've shown you who I am. We have this koinonia. See him exactly right. like you see me. Yep. Um, you know what I hear when I read this verse 17? If you and I really have koinonia, then trust me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Trust me. Oops, that's a nasty word. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost one of the four-letter words. It that really is. It's, it is true. <laughs> it's truly trust because he's, I think he's literally saying, back to the well again, because I can't get away from that, but if, if, you're, if you're willing to protect from my well and let me protect from yours, and you just said, he just said, if we are in Koinonia, yeah. then he can protect of your well, and you can protect trust him to protect of his because... He and I are just as much one right. as you and I are. That's, that's exactly right. So there's, there's no difference. Yep, that's right. And that's it's the same. Totally We've trust. talked about this so many times before when Jesus was here in John 17, where he says, now I have this relationship with the Father, and so do you. Mm -hmm. So he, he literally trusts us to n enough to say, I'm going to be right here, but you have this direct access to the yes. Father, the same exact thing that I do. Yeah. I mean... That's the nature of the Father coming out in Paul. Right. Like, I don't have to be there. You can partake literally yeah. of whatever you like. Think about that. The Father actually gives us Jesus just like Paul gives back to Philemon Onesimus and says, Hey, receive him and you've received me. Yeah. yeah. It's the same, the same anointing thing. of the Father. It's the yeah. same coin in the earth right. that they're talking about. Exactly. It even yep. goes back to this in Acts we were talking about that they had all things in common. Because he literally says to them, and hey, if he owes you something, I'll take care of it. Right. That's right. My checkbook is available. <laughs> exactly. Because that's me. That's Koinonia. That's Koinonia. Yeah. That's the real Koinonia. Yep. This will probably be our only session on Koinonia, but I want to pray, and, and maybe Mark and Steve too, just for a minute. So we just bless you, all of you, with this anointing of the love of the Father and this Koinonia fellowship through the Spirit. And we, as men right now we open our hearts to you and we pray that this anointing would touch you right where you are and would literally take down the walls that you've put yourself into so that you the real you could be seen and we bless you we bless everything inside of you and we ask that this anointing of koinonia again not the ministry but the anointing of koinonia these things we've been talking about this last 30 40 minutes would touch you so deep that this relationship you have with the Father would literally overtake your life. And we bless everything inside of you. We pray that you would experience this love. This love that actually helps you to take down the walls that you struggle to take down yourself. It gives yeah. you the ability to strip off armor that you've used to defend and protect yourself for yeah. so long. And we pray that this love would so overwhelm you that you would not be afraid to partake of all that's available to you yeah. in the people that love you, in the Father, the Son, and His Spirit themselves. We pray that nothing would keep you, nothing would separate you from this love, because nothing really does. Anything that does right now is something we created, and it's not real. So we pray that this love would literally strip away everything that keeps you from experiencing all that's available to you, even your own good well on the inside of you. That's right. We pray that you'd be able to see it, experience yours and ours. We pray for the fullness of the spirit of Koinonia in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specifically, I want to I want to pray that that those bound by this orphan mentality that I have to protect myself, uh, 
would find true koinonia mm -hmm. with the Father, with the Spirit, and with your brothers Thank you, Lord. and sisters. Mm -hmm. That you would, you would find that there is trust and that you don't have to defend yourself. That you literally would, would walk in this true koinonia, this fellowship, mm -hmm. in the Spirit and, and in the body. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Well, bless all of you people. We love you. We love you. Yeah.